The movie begins in the charming yet ordinary setting of a pet store specializing in cats. So Yan, our central character who works there, is engaged in the routine task of bathing a pet named the cat. Suddenly, Mrs. Lee, the cat's owner, arrives. She comes in to settle the bill for the grooming service. There's a light-hearted moment where So Yan lovingly cradles the cat in her arms, playfully engaging with the animal. Yet, this seemingly normal scene is soon filled with mystery. So Yan notices a shadowy figure lurking just beyond the store's glass pane. When she tries to get a clearer look, the figure vanishes, leaving behind an eerie emptiness. This moment subtly sets the stage for the supernatural elements that will unfold. The narrative then shifts to Mrs. Lee, who after leaving the pet store, returns to her apartment building. In a shocking and unsettling turn of events, Mrs. Lee is discovered dead on the elevator floor as it reaches the 11th floor. The cat is there too, meowing and licking its lips in the corner, a stark contrast to the grim scene around it. The movie then refocuses on So Yan, exploring her personal struggles. She is seen in a therapy session, discussing her ongoing battle with emotional trauma. Her claustrophobia, stemming from a harrowing childhood experience involving a fire, is a pivotal aspect of her character. It's a moment of vulnerability that adds depth to her persona. As she leaves the therapy session and heads back to the pet store, she learns of Mrs. Lee's tragic death, a revelation that further complicates the already mysterious narrative. In the wake of Mrs. Lee's mysterious death, the police, led by Officer Jun Suk, arrive to investigate the chilling scene. Amidst the chaos, they find the cat, a silent witness to the tragedy. So Yan, present at the scene, is drawn into a conversation with Jun Suk who happens to be the ex-boyfriend of her friend Bo He. Jun Seok, recognizing So Yan's familiarity with the cat, requests her to temporarily take care of the animal. She agrees, and they exchange phone numbers so he can update her if the cat's owner is located. The atmosphere thickens with unease as So Yan prepares to bring the cat home. She places it in a cage, but a sudden movement catches her eye. Looking towards the window, she is startled by the sight of a little girl standing just outside. However, when she double-checks, the girl has vanished, intensifying the sense of fear. As she walks home, clutching the cat's cage, So Yan can't shake off a creeping sensation of being followed. Living alone, her anxiety is heightened by these unnerving occurrences. Her solitude is briefly interrupted by a phone call from Bo He, who casually talks about adopting a cat. So Yan mentions her encounter with Jun Suk, but their conversation does little to ease her growing anxiety. Back at home, So Yan tries to distract herself by playing with the cat. The animal, however, seems equally unsettled. Abruptly stopping its play, the cat fixates on something beneath the bed. Curiosity peaked, So Yan peers under the bed to retrieve the cat, but is met with a horrifying sight. She glimpses what appears to be a pair of eyes staring back at her. Startled, she takes a second look, only to be confronted by a terrifying face lunging towards her. In a moment of sheer panic, she screams, recoiling in horror, her heart racing with fear. The following day unfolds with a new venture for So Yan and her friend Bo He as they board a bus heading towards a cat shelter. Bo He, eager to master her grooming skills, is on the lookout for a long-haired cat suitable for practice. However, this intention irritates So Yan, who finds the idea somewhat selfish. She expresses her frustration to Bo He, highlighting her discomfort with the idea of using these animals merely as practice tools. Upon arrival at the shelter, they are greeted by a somewhat grim atmosphere. The shelter, filled with numerous caged cats, is dusty and somewhat neglected, reflecting a sense of abandonment. Lee, one of the shelter's workers, takes on the role of guiding them through this space. Amidst the cages, Bo He's attention is captured by a cat she finds particularly appealing, a pet she affectionately names Kitten. In a stark contrast to the scene of cat adoption, Lee momentarily excuses himself and enters a separate room. There, he coldly handles the grim task of disposing of two dead cats, unceremoniously placing them into an incinerator. This harsh reality of the shelter's operation casts a shadow over the previous scene of potential adoption. Later, while at work, So Yun stumbles upon a horrifying sight, a storage room filled to the brim with the lifeless bodies of cats. This macabre discovery is soon escalated into a terrifying encounter. 
From the pile of deceased animals, a hand suddenly emerges, gripping so Yan's ankle and attempting to pull her. In a frantic struggle, she manages to escape, her heart pounding with terror. As so Yan stands outside, trying to process the horror she just experienced, she sees the same mysterious little girl she saw before, now standing inside the room she just fled from. At this moment, Junsook appears, offering a comfort of safety and normalcy. Concerned for so Yan's well-being, he inspects the room for any signs of an intruder, but finds nothing amiss. With a protective manner, he then escorts so Yan back to her home, providing a brief respite from the unsettling events of the day. That night, after the unsettling events of the day, so Yan struggles to find peace in her sleep. Her rest is invaded by a nightmarish vision, one where the cat appears decapitated, a creepy image intertwined with the presence of her father. This disturbing dream jolts her awake, drenched in a cold sweat. However, a small sense of relief washes over her when she notices the cat's tail peeking from under the blanket. Eager for a comforting sight, she reaches out to touch the cat, only to be met with a terrifying discovery. Instead of the cat, she finds a frightening little girl sleeping in her bed. The following day, so Yan visits her friend Bohi, who is enthusiastically preparing to groom her new pet, Kitten. However, the cat proves to be uncooperative, frantically moving and eventually scratching Bohi. In a panic, Kitten dashes into the closet, hiding from Bohi's attempts to take it out. When Bohi finally manages to grasp Kitten and begins to pull her out, she is confronted by the eerie sight of the same scary little girl, now standing eerily by her closet. So Yan, unaware of this chilling presence, finds the closet door mysteriously closed. With a sense of apprehension, So Yan decides to check on her friend. She enters the dimly lit room, where the lights are mysteriously not working. Slowly, she approaches the closet, only to find a pair of feet visible among the hanging clothes. As she draws closer and parts the clothes, the little girl appears, startling her. The girl's movement causes the clothes to shift, revealing the horrific sight of Bohi's lifeless body. In a state of shock and urgency, So Yan rushes Bohi to the hospital. Despite her frantic efforts, the doctors are unable to save Bohi's life. Jun Suk, who arrives at the hospital, is devastated by the loss of his ex-girlfriend. Overwhelmed by grief and unable to comprehend the mysterious circumstances of Bohi's death, he directs his anger and frustration at So Yan, blaming her for the tragic events that seem to follow her. The narrative continues the following day with a seemingly normal moment that quickly takes a sinister turn. So Yan, engaged in the everyday task of cooking, accidentally cuts herself. As blood trickles down her index finger, the cat, drawn by the scent, begins to unnervingly lick her wound. Startled and frightened by this behavior, So Yan instinctively pushes the cat away, only to be met with a growling response. Disturbed by this interaction, she decides to confine the cat in a cage. Determined to rid herself of the unsettling presence of the cat, So Yan plans to return it to Mrs. Lee's husband. However, upon reaching his apartment with this intention, she faces a flat refusal. The man is convinced about not taking the cat back, even offering to pay So Yan to continue caring for it instead. Frustrated and desperate to disassociate herself from the cat, So Yan makes the drastic decision to abandon the cat in a random area, a choice that weighs heavily on her conscience. As she attempts to leave the isolated spot, her path is unexpectedly blocked by an elderly homeless woman. Concerned for the woman's well-being, So Yan escorts her to the nearest police station. There, it's revealed that the woman suffers from Alzheimer's disease, which explains her disoriented state. Her son soon arrives to take her home, bringing a brief moment of resolution to this encounter. Meanwhile, Jun Seok, feeling remorseful for his earlier outburst at the hospital, apologizes to So Yan and offers to walk her home. His protective gesture hints at a deepening connection between them. Jun Seok, still grappling with the unexplained deaths, decides to delve further into the mystery. He contacts the animal shelter to inquire about Bohi's cat, Kitten, but the call is abruptly cut off. In a grim turn of events, the scene shifts to the animal shelter, where Lee is seen killing Kitten. After photographing the lifeless animal, he disposes of it in the incinerator. However, the incinerator door starts malfunctioning, refusing to close properly. 
As Lee investigates, he is suddenly attacked by the ghostly little girl seen previously. She violently pulls him into the incinerator, locking him inside and activating it, adding another chilling chapter to the series of horrifying incidents. Back at her home, Soyeon experiences yet another eerie occurrence. She hears a faint, unsettling noise outside her door. Curiosity peaked, she peers through the peephole and is startled to see someone teasingly dangling the same toy she once used to play with the cat. Straining her eyes for a clearer view, her heart skips a beat when the spooky little girl appears again, her eyes unnervingly resembling those of a cat. In the midst of these unnerving events, Jun Seok reaches out to So Yan, asking her to join him at the animal shelter. Once there, they make a grim discovery. They come across photographs of numerous cats that have been killed. A strange noise draws them to the incinerator, where they are horrified to find the remains of Lee, the shelter worker. Diving deeper into the shelter's records, they uncover a disturbing pattern. Many cats, including the cat, were rescued from the same location. So Yan then makes a chilling observation. All the victims of these mysterious killings were found in enclosed spaces, the elevator, a closet, and now the incinerator. She realizes that the perpetrator, whoever or whatever it may be, seems incapable of killing in open areas. This fact sheds light on why So Yan herself has been spared. Her claustrophobia always keeps her away from confined spaces. Driven to uncover more truths, So Yan heads to the Animal Rescue Association alone. There, she learns about the origins of this sinister tale. The Dongha apartment building, adjacent to a park, was erected amid growing complaints about cats from the residents. In an attempt to address the issue, all openings in the basement, where the cats frequently gathered, were sealed off. During her investigation, So Yan comes across video footage from the pet shop where she recognizes the cat's toy. Meanwhile, her boss, back at the pet shop, spots the cat peeking through the store window. He hastily lets the cat in and locks it in a cage in the storage room. As he struggles to silence the cat's loud cries, the creepy little girl makes a chilling appearance, whispering into his ear. Startled, he turns around in a panic, only to be brutally attacked and killed by the ghostly figure. Upon arriving at the pet store, So Yan is met with a horrifying sight, the lifeless body of her boss, another victim in the string of eerie occurrences. In the aftermath of this shocking discovery, Jun Suk arrives to offer his support. Soon after, So Yan encounters the old lady with Alzheimer's once more. The lady, lost and confused, is searching for her missing granddaughter. This encounter propels So Yan to head towards the Dong Ho apartments, determined to confront and end the haunting chain of events. On her journey, So Yan crosses paths again with the Alzheimer's stricken old lady. In a crucial moment, So Yan asks Jun Suk to find out the lady's address while she decides to follow her, hoping it will lead to some answers. The old lady, disoriented and distressed, mentions her missing granddaughter. Meanwhile, Jun Sok, at the police station, discovers reports about the old lady's missing granddaughter, He Jin. The description and picture of He Jin strikingly resemble the little girl that So Yan has been seeing. Simultaneously, So Yan discovers pictures of He Jin at the old lady's house, confirming her suspicions and leaving her shocked. However, her investigation is abruptly interrupted when she's forced to leave by the old lady's son. Undeterred, she follows the cat to the basement of the building. In a dramatic turn of events, So Yan finds herself trapped inside an empty water tank. It's there that the little girl, He Jin, reveals herself once again, but this time her story comes to light. He Jin, it turns out, had been trying to save the cats trapped in the basement on the day it was sealed. Tragically, during her rescue attempt, she fell into the tank and died, surrounded by the very cats she tried to save. In a supernatural twist, the cats somehow revived her from death. Driven by a vengeful spirit, He Jin has been hunting and killing those who mistreat cats. The movie reaches its climax as He Jin confronts So Yan. In a moment of unexpected mercy, He Jin decides to spare So Yan's life, bringing the movie to a haunting yet emotional conclusion. This resolution not only brings a sense of closure, but also casts a chilling reminder of the consequences of cruelty towards animals. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. 
For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.